Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kaguya Sama Love is War reaction. This time we'll be doing season 3, episode 7, which has Miko Ino Can't Love, part 1, students wish to discuss the culture festival, and Miyuki Shirogane wants to blow it up. Alrighty, but before we get into that, recap from last episode. Coming after the events of the rap episode before, last episode was more of a sort of a reset where it was sort of back into still you know some of the humor of the show and everything but also had like a kind of melancholy feel to it as shirogane sort of really started to feel like the time pressure they're only in second year but you know things are already getting busy and as they've made note of previously third year is going to be even more busy for them which makes it a bit more difficult to get sort of things done and it's not really like he can wait till the end of the third year because that leaves no actual time before he ends up leaving the country for college. So so he's really starting to feel it. And his dad sort of also gave him a bit of advice there as well. You know, one moment where his dad wasn't being <laughs> used just for humor and just to, just to get on Yuki's nerves. But it was a sort of a fairly quiet moment as his dad said, you know, if there's anything that he needs to do, he really needs to make sure he does it. That said, there were also some fun moments. Of course, as I mentioned, Shirogane's dad there, being a dad, as always. This time not really messing with his son, but really enjoying messing with uh, Shinomiya, which is pretty funny. He really knows how easily flustered she is, and she just kind of makes herself <laughs> quite a quite a great target for that. But we also got to meet um, Ai Hayasaka's mother uh, now, who, with whom it seems they have a pretty good relationship, albeit strained due to distance and absence. But otherwise, you know, they seem to get along pretty well, and I wonder whether we're going to be seeing any more of her. Mm. But beyond that, just a little bit more of Shiragane sort of lacking confidence, all that sort of thing deciding to try to get some other perspectives on himself, which just sort of ends up crushing his spirit, as Fujiwara, you know, takes the chance to just try roasting him. But ending well, with uh, Shinomiya sort of buoying his confidence again. Although, in that last episode, Shinomiya really did seem sort of very distracted. So that was a continuation. Um, it was a nice thing that she said, but she was... But, like, I don't know whether it's just that she was be just being, you know, sort of her calm self, or whether I should read that she was a bit, you know, lower energy and feeling a bit more depressed from from the previous things that had happened uh, in the episode. Anyway, enough of that. As usual, just a quick reminder that this is a full-length timer-based reaction, which means you'll need to get your own copy to sync up and watch along with me. There'll be little snippets of video and little bits of sound to help you uh, keep in sync, um, and also just so that I can show off the parts that I think are interesting or funny, but otherwise the sound is going to be muted and the picture is mostly going to be obscured. So I'll be starting the video from this frame, which as far as I can tell is the very start, um, and I'll be hitting play in 3, 2, 1, now. Looks like, you know, yeah, I think that was a, I think that was a younger, you know, I'm a big fan of all of the openings, I think. I really hope that we get to see more openings, more endings. Um, basically what I'm just saying is that I hope that this show gets as many seasons as it needs to tell its story. 
I don't know how long the uh how long the manga is though. Has that reached a conclusion or is it still going? And Hmm. I wonder how many seasons they could possibly make out of it. I'd really like to see how many like crazy openings and endings they can come up with. What was that culture festival? Two days of festivities, was it? <laughs> Two of the Wow <laughs> Yes, this is true. <laughs> it's gonna be just as crazy. I woke up lol for real, it makes no sense at all. It's totally amazing lol, why don't we party like there's no tomorrow? Oh my god. This is how they work. Mm hmm. I mean, that was a good point. She's so nice. <clears throat> I'd like to charge more for goods. Eliminate the minimum purchase price requirement. Is that guy looking so? This guy is still seething in the background. <laughs> oh wow at first oh, of course
naturally. Oh my god, they make them look so bad. <laughs> oh, she was super enthusiastic about it. Oh, it was about the fire. I guess she just really likes that, huh? She must just have, like, really fond memories of that. A lot of drama. Well, that'll be to their benefit, I think. It's a lot of work. She must really... She's got one heck of a will. Yeah. See, I think Ishigami admires that about her. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. Let your burning love reach everyone. Oh, did she submit that herself? Perplex Kaguya in the flesh. Oh, jeez. She is quite... Uh, varied in skills. Multi-talented was the word I was searching for and I don't know why it evaded me at that moment. I was just a, I'm just a mere insect.
Oh my gosh. I don't think that sort of hero worship is healthy. Archery Championship. Ooh. Yeah, she doesn't want anything. Possibly interrupting that chance of a date. Well, wow. <laughs> well, this episode, all of the all of the camera angles on on her viewers. Third year's last pro. Oh, yeah, it would be. Astronomy Club. For balance. Oh. Yuck is a daughter, huh? <laughs> what is this? The snake? Dragon, of course. They're such fangirls of, like, everyone. The major incident involving the entire cultural festival. <laughs> board, game, board game club looks pretty wacky
Miyuki Shirogane wants to blow it up. Oh, it's a balloon. <laughs> I like that. Like, don't you dare. Because I'm going to get involved again. And I won't be able to handle it. I don't think so. <laughs> she does have certain thoughts on this people putting. Wow. <laughs> On your own, not always. <laughs> she can't stop, but part of her also can't help herself. Always, he always softens it just a little bit. Bang. And she's just gonna silently deal with it. This is almost like when he was, no, when she was giving him the hand massage. And actually, he wouldn't say anything. He's a super hard worker though, huh? Hard work fosters memory, observation skills, and reason. Well, wow, that's um an extremely straightforward and honest 
basically compliment that she's given him. Oh, so they were all just bound to break. Of course, I'd help out the inept. Bang. <laughs> All because she couldn't hold her tongue at the very end. <laughs> Silly. What if they spun off each of these endings? Both the first and third ones I, I think are really cool. And I won't lie, it's probably because of the Shinomiya painful imagery. Well, that was another another building episode, I guess. A lot more stuff sort of being set up. Both, you know, bits of information, making sure to bring through characters again, just so that we're sort of familiar with the the various people who well, make up the school. We do tend to obviously focus on our student council, but there are lots of other side characters. As the season, or as the show, tends to approach larger events, we tend to see them again, so... But yeah, first off, we had um, Ishigami and Ino both joining the Culture Festival Committee to help. Both feeling a little reluctant, it didn't seem like, you know, their, their thing specifically, but upon hearing that Tsubame was leading that committee, uh, Ishigami was instantly on board. They were the furthest people you could imagine from being comfortable in that sort of uh, enthusiastic atmosphere. But of course, Ishigami has been through that sort of thing before. Uh, this is a different group, obviously. This isn't the, this isn't the cheer squad. The small rivalry being set up between Ishigami and, you know, the various other uh, boys who are all vying for Tsubame's attention. Tsubame, who, by the way, seems to be like a really genuinely nice person. She's both enthusiastic in her role, and she also, you know, went to try to help, uh, you know, you know, calm down before. But speaking of Ino, we did see at the start that she apparently has a fondness for campfires. That was, um, she must sort of have some fond childhood memories of it and perhaps doesn't really get such opportunity now, so she's obviously very enthusiastic about the idea. I think it's implied that she must have submitted that idea herself. There was a fun little interaction there, again, with Eno after she had thrown her support behind the idea, and the rest of the committee didn't so much, you know, shut her down, like, just out of spite for the idea, but more just 
because of the reality that it would actually be quite a difficult idea to actually make happen. And faced with, you know, that sort of opposition, you know, started to wilt again under the attention and having to, you know, be able to explain or, you know, being able to like come up with a solution and and fight for her idea. And then it's interesting that Ishigami, you know, sort of recognized it and asked whether she needed needed help. She said no, but in reality I think that he did help her in that case. Once again, by basically taking her attention away, like catching her attention and drawing it away from, you know, this nervous situation that she was in, she managed to sort of like well up her well up her strength and you know, start talking about and addressing the actual issue there. Um, despite her glare at Ishigami and saying, you know, I don't need your help. It's like, um, I think he already helped just by making you so indignant at him in that moment. And so that was a great interaction to see. And then the second portion of the episode was mostly the interviews, which was just a quick way, a quick way to sort of introduce us to the festival and also just to set up like a few other ideas, as well as the reminder that Shinomiya is just quite multi-talented, and that there is a an archery com uh, competition championship at some point, but that she hasn't been taking part in, I guess, because the time overlaps with when she hoped to be able to do something with Miyuki if you know either of them actually you know, <laughs> get over themselves enough to actually make something happen. So I don't know whether we're going to see more of that, but potentially we will. Again, as I said, this is an episode which is sort of building and introducing elements to potentially come up later. We saw a few of the other characters and other things that are going to happen, but I think I'm just going to skip to the last part again, which was another another instance of of Shuragane showing his um, lack of ability in new things. He really is a hard worker, but I don't think like anything seems to come naturally for him. He just... The only way that he's good at things is because he's had to put in like a lot of effort into it. And that comes to, yeah, both apparently just inflating balloons and tying them up into, you know, balloon art. Not something that I've ever tried myself, actually. But I would like to think that I could at least inflate the balloons properly, <laughs> and it wouldn't be until I actually started making some reasonable effort on the on the balloon art that it would burst. So that section included some fun interactions, both with um, Fujiwara, again showing how she wrestles back and forth with... She knows now through multiple experiences, how difficult it is to actually teach Shiragane to, well, you know, in anything, in any of these things that he's trying to achieve. But she also can't ignore someone that hopeless, but who is also so determined. And I think that's, I think that's really funny about her. Because she is very passionate about, um, about that sort of thing. And as we discovered in last episode, that is the sort of person that she likes, even though she feels weird when she realizes that it also applies to Shiragane. Um, that person who fights real hard to, you know, achieve all of the things. And the other interaction we got to see was with Shinomiya, where Shinomiya was just very straight. It was just a very normal and very nice interaction between them. I mean, you know, apart from the first bit where he was just <laughs> constantly um, popping balloons, which must be, as it said, you know, truly a form of torture for Shinomiya. But beyond that, she also just complimented him very straightforwardly. There was sort of no guile or anything. And again, if anything, that felt like the most... That felt like such a positive interaction that I honestly want to throttle <laughs> Shuragane if something doesn't happen soon, because how can you hear her say that about you and not 
feel super enthused. Anyway, now we are definitely past the halfway mark of the season. Next time will be episode 8. But until then, why don't you tell me your thoughts about this episode in the comments below. Um, if you like this reaction, then hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But regardless, take care, and I'll see you next time.